Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing. In this content, we will be delving into some of the scientific literature on creatine versus whey protein supplementation and their effect on muscular hypertrophy or growth. Learn your body, a science-based education of different types of muscle cells. This data comes from a study I have fully examined, which will be linked to this content for you, as well as any detailed notes covering more depth and more information. And finally, amendments are also linked to this content should the need arise after this is published. With that introduction, let's understand briefly how these researchers went about probing this question we're interested in. The researchers had 33 recreational lifters that had to meet certain criteria to be included in the study. To make absolutely sure there would not be a newbie training effect, the participants enrolled were put on a 12-week training program provided for them. They were also instructed to cease all supplements for the 12 weeks leading up to the beginning of the study. At the start of the study, participants were split into four groups, consuming equal amounts of four different combinations of supplements. One, a carbohydrate-only supplement. Two, a carbohydrate-creatine blend. Three, a whey protein-only supplement. And four, a carbohydrate-creatine blend. The participants were asked to maintain their nutrition throughout the study, and the supplements were roughly equicaloric to ensure similarity among the groups. Participants had muscle biopsies taken at the start of the study and at the end to access muscle cell type and overall growth over 10 to 11 weeks resistance training program that consisted of supervised training designed by researchers and personal trainers. And with that synopsis, what results were discovered? You can see that the four groups are labeled on the bottom and the size of the muscle cells is labeled on the vertical axis. The number mark or hashtag is reflective of the difference comparing white bars as baseline to post-study black bars training makes on the muscle cell size. So if a group has a hashtag above it, it was significantly increased due to training alone. If there's an asterisk, then the group is significantly increased compared to the carbohydrate only group. And if the group has a cross above it, it's wholly blessed. Just kidding. It means those groups were significantly elevated compared to the whey protein group. So in type one fibers, which tend to be fatigue resistant, but typically generate less force and are also known as oxidative, fat metabolizing muscle cells, these are most relied on during long distance exercise. There was no muscle size increase in the carbohydrate group, but there was an effect from training alone in all three other conditions. However, there is an even greater effect from both creatine conditions, regardless of whey protein supplementation. So interesting results there. Looking at type 2A and type 2X muscle cells, these tend to be less fatigue resistant, but generate large amounts of force and are heavily implicated in lifting high weights. What do we find? All four conditions experienced a training effect and an even greater increase with creatine supplementation. Finally, in the last piece of data, looking at contractile protein amount, meaning looking at proteins that allow force production or muscle contractions to occur within the sarcomere, there is again a training effect in all groups. Interestingly, another creatine enhancement is seen with creatine. So what can we conclude from this data? Well, one resistance training leads to increases in muscle size across all muscle types except type 1 when remaining unsupplemented. Second, creatine has a potent muscle cell size effect in that it increases muscle size with or without whey protein supplementation and also in type 1 cells may have a greater effect than whey protein. However, their effect size was roughly equivalent in type 2 muscle cells, and creatine increases contractile protein content as well. So creatine is a potent supplement when paired with training in trained individuals across all conditions. And while whey protein is effective, it is not as effective as creatine alone or creatine paired with whey protein. With that mouthful out of the way, I hope this proved informative for you and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Bye.